my god, dude. Bro. Bro. This thing is dense. Oh, it's cut. <laughs> That's nutty. Dude, that is that is the thing. That is it. That is stuffed pizza. Things fat. This is like the cousin of deep dish, bro. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That hurts so deliciously. Look at that. So they usually make these in these really deep special pans, but you can actually do this at home pretty well with a cast iron. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. <laughs> Here in Chicago, there are three distinct pizza styles. You got tavern, you got deep dish, and you got stuffed. As the title of the video suggests, we are going to focus on the latter. Now, stuffed can be considered probably like the cousin of deep dish, right? Very similar crust styles, they're both very loaded. The main difference being, there's a thin layer of dough over the top, kind of holding everything in, therefore giving it that stuffed characteristic. The good news is that no matter where you are on planet Earth, if you have some basic ingredients, a decent oven, and a cast iron pan, you can make stuffed pizza just like they do here in the city of Big Shoulders. I like dropping Big Shoulders because it's a new one. A lot of people don't know that. It's because we're all big burly boys, big farm boys, big, big strong, we're big strong guys. <laughs> to make classic Chicago stuffed pizza, we need a specific dough that can hold up to all that cheese. <coughs> to the bowl of a stand mixer, add water, active dry yeast, and shugs. Whisk that up, then let it get active until it's nice and bubbly, three to five minutes or so. Now spoon in all of that all-purpose flour, the cornmeal, and kosher salt. Pop the bowl on the mixer with the dough hook, then set the speed to the lowest setting and slowly pour in the melted lard and unsalted butter. Let the machine run until all the dough comes together into a shaggy mass, then cut the power and plop it onto a clean work surface. See how dry that is? So this is a low hydration dough, meaning that there's not a lot of water in the dough which means that it's gonna be a little tougher and harder to work with and it's gonna be harder on your mixer, which is why we're doing it by hand now. Another big feature of this dough is that there's a lot of fat in it, right? That butter and the lard. What does fat do? It repels water, which is good because we're loading this thing up with a bunch of sausage and cheese and other things that can kind of leak moisture throughout the cooking process. So we need a nice sturdy dough to be able to stand up to that. Knead the dough by hand until it's smooth and shiny. And no need to worry about passing the window test or building any gluten here. We just need it to be smoothed out. This is gonna take anywhere from five to 10 minutes of hand kneading. Be patient, it will come together. Lube up a container with some olive oil, then set it on the counter at room temperature. Now before using that dough, you're gonna to wanna to let it sit at room temperature for at least four hours. However, if you wanna go above and beyond, at the stage after the dough has been mixed and rolled into a ball, pop it in the fridge and let it prove overnight. You can even leave it in there for two, even three days. It's just gonna develop flavor. Next on Z docket is sauce. This Chicago style pizza sauce is great for deep dish and stuffed pizza alike. And the best part about it is that it's a no cook situation. A no cook recipe. To a large mixing bowl, dump in some canned crushed tomatoes. The highest quality that you can find will work. Then some tomato paste, garlic, olive oil, dried oregano. It's not what it looks like. Weed, joke. A few cracks of BP, kosher salt, and you already know a pinch of the God Particle, AKA MSG. All you gotta do now is whisk that up and we are donezo. The sauce is gonna cook and thicken atop the pizza later on, so there's no need to reduce it down now. And that's the best thing about Chicago style sauce. It's literally the easiest thing to make. Divide the dough into thirds, either by eye or, you know, if you're a nerd with a scale. Then we need to make two separate balls, one with two thirds of dough and the other with the remaining one third, which will be our lid. Cover and let rest for 15 minutes just to kind of relax the dough and make it easier to roll out. While you're waiting for that dough to relax, go ahead and prepare a 12 inch cast iron skillet by smearing it heavy with unsalted butter, then dusting in a bit of Parmesan or Pecorino Romano cheese. Make sure to get all the crevasses, all the side walls, and a smidge more of cornmeal. Cornmeal is a pretty important ingredient. It adds a lot of texture and sort of character to this crust. It's definitely a real Chicago thing, so don't skip it. Shake out the excess and you have a nice, beautifully lined pan ready for our dough. Okay, let's start with the small dough ball. Again, this is going to be our lid. 
dunk that boyo on both sides into a bowl of cornmeal. Yes, more cornmeal. Then use a large rolling pin and even pressure to roll the dough flat to a roughly 1 6th inch thickness and 14 to 15 inch width. Not too thin, not too thick. Set it aside on a clean sheet tray, then lay a piece of parchment paper right on top there, just to kind of divide the two doughs. Now repeat the process with the larger dough ball, going for the same thickness, but this time roll it out to 16 or 17 inches wide. Start by rolling down, then up, then flip the dough over and rotate it 90 degrees and do it all over again. Again, for a nice circular piece of dough, be sure to apply even pressure on both sides of the rolling pin. If you follow these steps, you're going to have a nice circular piece of dough, and this technique can be used for anything from pizza to pie crust to, I don't know, anything else that you roll out. Grab your butterified prepared cast iron and carefully lay in the larger piece of dough. Use your little fingies to ensure that the dough is pushed into the corners of the pan real nice and snug-like. And that's why we, we rolled out to 16 inches. We want a little bit of overhang here. Now, as we say in Chicago, it's time to line in the Dalian sausage. Go ahead and pinch off marble-sized pieces of either mild or hot Italian sausage. Then gently press them into the bottom of the dough, forming a nice little meaty layer. If you're lactose intolerant, you might want to shield your eyes for this next part. Then it's in with lots and lots of grated full-fat mozzarella cheese. I'm talking pounds, plural. Guys, this is not health food, so don't skimp on the cheese. We're going for a gooey, crusty, and delicious above-ground swimming pool that you can shove in your mouth hole. Before adding the top layer, wet the rim of the dough with a smidge of water. We want the dough to be a little tacky so that it adheres to the other piece. And finally, what makes it stuffed pizza? The lid. Press the top dough into the side walls of the bottom dough, and this is why we rolled the dough out a little wider than 12 inches. I just like to go around the rim here, pinching the two pieces of dough together. Very important step, we need some air holes because look at this. See that? It's like a heartbeat. Now slice a few holes on the top crust just to let the steam escape. Don't worry about what they look like because we're going to cover the whole thing in a thin layer of sauce. Now sauce it up and do your best to top the entire pizza, ensuring that there are no visible white spots of the dough peeking through. White spots are a no-go, unless of course they look something like this. Oh, What is this? Real quick, I want to talk to you guys about the Omnivorous Adam Patreon page. We're doing a lot of fun stuff over there. We're doing monthly cooking contest giveaways, live cooking demos, and even access to exclusive merchandise. Kind of like this. We're having a lot of fun over there. If you want to help the channel out, it's definitely the easiest way to do so. However, if you can't swing it, that's totally fine. Come say what up in Discord. We're hanging out in there. We're talking about food, life, everything in between, so come introduce yourself. All right, let's get back to the vid. Use a knife to slice away the excess overhanging dough from the pan, then pop the entire pizza into a 500 degree Fahrenheit oven that's been preheated for at least one hour. <laughs> it's really important that the oven is charged with heat. For the first round, bake the pizza for 12 minutes. Then turn it 180 degrees and cook for another 12 minutes. If the crust looks a little pale around the rim, just let it bake for another few minutes until it looks nice and juicy. Oh yeah, golden brown. Now I hate to be the guy to tell you this, I hate to be the pizza dad, but you need to allow the pizza to rest for at least 15 minutes in the pan before attempting to remove it. There's a lot of melty goodness in this thing, so give it some space and let it breathe for a bit. Look at that. We have that beautiful cheese baked into it. This is looking nice. Check that undercarriage. Once slightly cooled, use a flexible spatula or something similar to pop the pie out from the pan, then slice it into six equal pieces. I'm using this pizza rocker here, but a long sharp knife will do the trick too. Over time, I've found that the best way to serve this is just to pop it back in the pan to contain all of that cheesy lava flow. But before indulging, don't forget to hit it with a dusting more of crumbled Parmesan cheese and dried oregano. Some of the herb. How sexy that is, my dudes. Have you ever seen a pie that's sexy? And that, my friends, is the 100% attainable, homemade, Chicago stuffed pizza of your dreams. Alright, she's been cooling a little while now, let's dig into it. Oh my god, dude. Bro. 
Bro. Jeez. Cheeses. Cheeses. Wow. Peep that undercarriage, dude. So, hiding under the cheese curtain, you can see how important it is that we used our crust to whip away that water there. A lot of people will use a fork and a knife, but I'm an animal, so. Diggity, diggity dang. Bro. Dude, this is like, it's like the unending well of cheese. It's like a myth mythical cheese well. That's insane. This is real deal. Chicago stuffed Pete's. I hope this video helped to open up the pearly pizza gates so that you can try this at home no matter what city or just wherever you live. As always, if you dug the video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here or if you're gonna try making this pizza. And come say what up in Discord, we be chillin'. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Until next time, ciao.